Recently, I haven't been able to log into LinkedIn without seeing a post about somebody who has been laid off. And early in my career, I was laid off. And I remember this feeling of helplessness and not knowing what to do next. In today's video, I'm going to give you an eight step plan of exactly what you should do if you find out that you were laid off. Let's go. Now the first thing that I'm gonna recommend you do might seem uh, a little bit out of the box, but I want you to take time to process it. Being laid off can be emotionally draining, it can be scary, and it can be very, very challenging to go through. So don't immediately rush into action and start doing things. Instead, take a day, process it, you know, cry if you need to, you know, take that moment to feel mad that it's unfair of what's happening to you. And then maybe go do something you like, go play basketball, go kayak, but take that day to fully recharge, get your mind right, because then you're gonna need to jump into action. But right away, take a little bit of time and process it. Now the next thing I want you to do is think about being really intentional about your actions. Some people have this response that, I'm gonna go apply to 50 jobs, 100 jobs, but I can tell you as somebody who has been a corporate recruiter and an agency recruiter, that you are far better off taking the time, customizing a resume, and being really intentional about applying to five great fit jobs than 50 jobs where you're just flinging out a resume and maybe you're not a great fit. Time is finite and you can only apply to one company so many times before it's a bit of a red flag. So I want you to be intentional about where you put your effort. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to create a schedule. I know it seems a bit weird, you no longer have a job, why should you need to adhere to a schedule? But people who are laid off and make schedules find a lot of comfort in it and they're effective. So what should your schedule look like? Well, your schedule should have time blocked for job searching. Um, researching companies that you're interested in that you wanna create target companies. Um, networking, reaching out to past colleagues and talking to them, letting them know, hey, just so you know I'm in the job market, I really enjoyed working with you. If your company's ever hiring or looking for someone like me, I would love to entertain it. Um, resume, uh, resume customization. So you find a job, find a job that's really interesting to you, take the time to tailor your resume so there's alignment, right? They're talking about the different requirements for the job, the skills, make sure you call that out specifically in your resume at the past jobs you've had that are aligned with the jobs you're pursuing. Then company research, right? You're inter you know, you've applied to a company, you get an interview, research them. Know so much about that company that it is clear that you have done a lot more homework than your competition. Finally, interview prep. When you um, are unemployed and you have the ability to take the time to interview prep, be ready. It is a massive advantage that you might have over people who are currently working, currently have a life outside of work, and don't have the time to prepare like you have the time to prepare. You may not have a job, but you can absolutely out-prepare some of the people um, that you're gonna be up against. You know, what, what can you do to prepare? Create stories you wanna be able to tell them. You can practice common interview questions of what your answers are gonna be. I have a playlist of like 35 different interview questions and how you can specifically answer them. Watch videos like that, prepare, be ready. And lastly, self-care. Take some time to do some, you know, some things you want. Go on a midday walk, get a workout in, get a run in, you know, play chess. Watch videos like Ben Talks Talent on YouTube. Also subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell, things like that to make you feel good. The next thing that's really important is I want you to make peace that um, with the fact that every single interview you may do, you may not get the job. Even if you have a great interview, there are other people who might be referrals or they, they might already work there. They're an internal applicant. There are many good reasons why someone who is great and has a great interview doesn't get a job. It has a tendency to be incredibly demotivating when you are unemployed. Don't let it get to you, it is going to happen. Every no gets you closer to a yes. I talked about this earlier, but network with people you used to work with. So many people, when they apply for jobs, spend an inordinate amount of time applying and an irresponsibly little amount of time actually networking, reaching out to, to people they used to work with, people that liked working with you. And here's a secret. People like helping other people. So reaching out to people you used to work with, letting them know that you're in the market, you're interested in opportunities. Their company might not even be hiring, but maybe they know of a company that's hiring. And when you are referred into an opportunity, it gives you a massive advantage over somebody who is just a cold applicant. So spend some time researching companies, preparing, you know, applying, but make sure you set aside time to effectively network with people that you have relationships with. I touched on this early, but there are very few things you can do that'll give you an advantage, like in the application process, more than resume customization. 
So I've done tons of videos that mention this, but when you look at a job description and they have six or seven bullet points of things you need to have experience in, five years experience, you know, using Python, you wanna make sure your resume says, you know, seven years experience using Python and then maybe quantify your impact. But tailor your resume to mirror the job description, caveat, it has to be accurate, don't lie. But if you can look at that and customize your resume so that it matches that job description, it is incredibly powerful. Not just so the hiring manager looks at that and goes, oh, there's a lot of overlap here. But so recruiters who might not be as familiar with what the, um, the nuances of the role are, they will see it and then applicant tracking systems, it also matters there, which are things that company use to kind of filter through the resumes when people apply. Lastly, interview prep, interview prep, interview prep. Interviewing is a skill, and that skill is very different than the job you do the vast majority of the time. So it does not pay to work so hard to customize a resume, network, and then go into an interview and wing it and hope that works because it won't work, especially when you're talking about a role that is highly competitive and you need this role. It feels like you need it because you're unemployed, so you put a lot of pressure on yourself. Don't put pressure on yourself without putting the preparation in. So again, think about five to six stories of things you have done in the past you wanna share um, during your resume, do extensive research on the company, go through and practice answering common interview questions like my playlist that I mentioned earlier, um, and just be ready, do mock interviews, do all those things, you know, be as prepared as possible. You don't control everything, but you control the amount of preparation you do. Now, the last thing I want you to do is I want you to watch this video because this video is going to teach you how to set up LinkedIn job alerts. When a job is posted on LinkedIn, you might only have, you know, a week to be one of the first applicants. So applying first is critical and knowing when that job is out well, that's gonna teach you a ton. It's gonna help you really get an advantage on being the candidate they decide to go with.